Hey guys, it's Jeremy Jacobus here for Brunch Voice, and today we are going on a really uh, awesome adventure. Uh, Belcampo is a meat purveyor, which is all about being uh, grass-fed and all organic and all natural, and they actually have a farm in California, but a restaurant in Hudson Yards. So today we're gonna go over to the restaurant, and not only are we going to eat meat, we'll eat a lot of meat, uh, but what's even cooler is I'm actually gonna go meet up with their CEO and founder, Anya, and she's going to give me a butchery lesson. Well, Anya, thank you so much for having me here. There's like so much going on and so much meat and so much energy, I love it. Um, but so tell me a little bit about the restaurant and then tell me a little bit like where the meat comes from. I think like that's, both those things are really exciting. Well, they're really connected. Yeah. Our Northern California ranches are where we produce all the livestock that turns into the meat that we sell at Belcampo. So yeah. we farm 27,000 acres of organic land in Northern California. We raise animals regeneratively and naturally, and uh, we do a really good job in the handling as well. We have our own USDA certified slaughterhouse and dry aging mm. area, so uh, the product tends to be extremely high quality. Yeah. Uh, really looking for a great flavor with grass-fed and grass-finished meat. Everything in the company is aged over two weeks, and then the rack that we're gonna be cutting is actually aged for about a month. Yeah, so that's what I'm excited about. I find like, it's just, I don't know, you don't think about it a lot of times, like most restaurants, I would say, every restaurant really doesn't like have their own farm where the meat comes from. I guess even when you call it farm to table, like it's not their farms no. for the most part. Yeah. I think it's really cool. We're doing things really differently. Yeah. We, I consider our company actually like an animal wellness company, which sounds uh, crazy because we always see products as animals for a living. Yeah. But the, the concept is how do we support human wellness? How do we support human health with really great quality protein? Yeah. That's what we're all about. And you're going to teach me how to break one down. Yes. So what do we have here? Okay, I have a whole. Wait, do I need gloves or not there yet? Oh yeah, here's some gloves. gloves. There okay. you go. <laughs> and Thank I'll bring you. it over. This is a uh, whole rack of beef. Um, so you can smell. It's like poetry, right? Mm, yeah. that, that dry age is a little bit funky, yeah. a little bit mushroomy. So this is actually the exterior of the rack has been out in the aging room. And this part's been cut off, so this is going to be much fresher smell. So you can smell that for the contrast. Oh yeah. Totally okay, different. so different. So this um, rack yeah, so here. Like, what, what were the steps to get to where we are right here in front of me? So we raise an animal for uh, a full year longer than conventional operations. Okay. It takes a lot longer to fatten up on grass. Yeah. So you see this has some really nice marbling, nice fat cap on it. Mm -hmm. This is a fully ready to go beef and that yeah. takes 26 months on grass. Okay. Just like for you or me, if you're eating all veggies, it takes a lot longer to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing for cows. So we don't feed them any corn. Okay. And um, that it takes a lot longer. So the animal is slaughtered around 24 to 27 months. Now is that for taste or just the wellness for the animals? What's, it's what's the both. Concern? The animal wellness is a, you know, that's about feeding them evolutionary diet, feeding them a really high quality grass diet. Yeah. So then the after it's it's uh, raised on our farm. Yeah. Goes 20 minutes down the road to our USDA slaughterhouse. Mm. It's processed there. Temple Grand and Peru slaughterhouse. So a humane handling, certified organic, mm -hmm. everything uh, really taken care of well. And then the animal is hung for 14 days in a whole carcass, then broken and aged for about another month for these wow, premium okay. steaks. And it loses 40% of the weight. So you'll notice um, that our meat is, there's just, it's, it's quite dry, right? So it's lost okay. uh, almost half the water weight. Uh, okay. So the flavor becomes very intense. It intensifies. And then it also becomes really, really mild. So you do have less fat in grass-fed okay. beef, you know? So yeah. I like to do the dry aging because where I'm compensating for that lack of fat with a much more tender, lean meat. That's also what you want. The yeah. so, yeah. That's, that's the most important part. There you go. Um, and the, the beef here that I have, um, we're gonna just be cutting into some steaks. I think we're gonna grill up a steak for you to eat, right? Okay. And in our restaurant here, that's, you know, all you, you can actually go to the, to the case choose a rack that you like, we'll cut it for you and, and cook it up however you like. That's <laughs> you get one of the benefits. Want. Well, you know, if you go to the trouble of raising these animals, I want all the care, you know, for yeah, that we have on the farm to take right through to the point of, of sale. So, um, so this beef here, this is the chuck eye end of the rack and this is the ribeye end, right? Okay. So you have uh, ribeyes through here. I think we'll cut you from the ribeye. This right. is kind of- Let me not ruin his <laughs> least amount of meat well, possible. Well, it's, 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 um, it's really like, slicing a, a loaf of bread honestly. Oh, okay. And this is actually called, this is cool, staking is actually a verb. So to stake something to is stake to cut it. it against the grain. To okay. stake it. So what you're gonna do is take your knife uh, and just, you'll just do a nice long cut through there. I encourage you to just like really lean into this and- Let the knife do the work. Don't saw. So you wanna don't get saw, as much, right, exactly. go slowly and allow the meat to just fall off the knife. If you can get through it in two cuts, it's gonna have the least amount of okay. uh, breakage on the surface. And then maybe start with the tip in here and then just start to sail down. Activate your core. There you go. 
and keep it nice and flat too. Uh-huh. Okay, now sail down. There awesome. you go. Uh-huh. Beautiful. Uh, and Natural. back? Yeah. Go back. And then uh, start from the top again. You're getting really close to the bottom there. Nice okay. job. Okay, and then you can just do one more cut here. You can either drag the knife back and come down. Okay. Um, and get that cut so through. Same sort of idea. And you'll get a little bit more resistance when you cut into the fat cap um, because that's going to be a bit thicker. So expect that you're going to need a saw a little bit more oh. there. Oh, I think uh, almost there. Like, whoops. Yep. Uh, and you. you can also take this little, little the baby bone, one. Yeah, the bony knife. Get in and there. Just kind of Smells I good. love the smell of beef. It smells delicious. Ooh, yeah, it does. It, it smells nice. fresh. Mm -hmm. it, and it's amazing. Yeah. It's, you know, five, six weeks, and it's just so, and that you can tell from that, the it's way beautiful. the flesh is not so puffy, it's not yeah. really wet, and that's that dry aging. Let's cut one more. I want okay. one, too. Like, I like mine to be not two inches thick. <laughs> How thick was that one? This is about the same. Okay, but a little bit, yeah, a little, a little bit, bigger. a little bit thicker. Beautiful. Okay, let's draw back. Awesome. This is, feels like a bigger piece. It's, it's kind of gratifying though, right? That feeling of it feels like a nice workout. There you go. Oh, beautiful. And then if you want to use that bony knife to just Sorry. snip through the fat. Oh yeah, we're almost there. there okay. You go. And you can also, just for fun, Oops. you can pistol grip it this way. And that'll make it easier to support. Okay. Oh. There you go. Beautiful. What I'm going to do then is salt these for okay. chef. And when I'm salting our steaks, um, I always want to do salt the fat cap as well. The fat's actually delicious. You're not going to eat a ton of it. but. Uh -huh. It tastes awesome, so I like to um, get a nice amount of fat on the salt on the cap, and then always trying to salt a little, like eight to ten inches above, just for even distribution, yep. so you don't get those hot spots. Also, always want to salt the bone side and the and the chine side, um, just getting salt really all over it. Yeah. People kind of, I think, typically undersalt a little bit on the steaks um, if you're doing it at home. So I oh, I, I always say the really biggest good. difference between when you cook at home and restaurants, which most people don't understand, is the amount of salt and butter in every single yeah, dish. Exactly. It's its eight times more than you'd ever do at home, but that's why it tastes so good. Right, right. We have our lovely meat in front of us. It's all cooked up and nice. Nice. Um, medium rare. <laughs> Perfect. On both of these. Yes, please. Okay. So grass fed tends to have a bigger, beefier flavor okay. in general. Um, ours is exceptionally mild, however. You're never going to get those flavors of any kind of like livery um, underpinnings here. It's a nice job on the cookie. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's so <laughs> tender. Some pieces for you. And then I have some chimmy if you want. I yeah. love chimmy. Well, let me taste on its own first, but then, yeah. It's really beautiful. Mm. Oh, wow. Right? Mm hmm. Mm. Good stuff. It still like has the fresh smell that I like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so recommend a little chimichurri yeah, on there? Yeah, I love that on it. Okay. Um, and you're getting a nice long finish, how it's got kind of a grassy finish mm -hmm. at the end. Yes. Thank you. How's that beef tasting? I got the beef okay. sweats already after, right, after one, one bite. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for teaching me how to cut some meat and for opening up a restaurant to me. And if you want to come eat your food, they could do it in supermarkets in California, mm -hmm. restaurants in California. And right and here in Hudson Yards. Right here in Hudson Yards, yeah. Bye. <laughs>